This video represents an expanded endoscopic endonasal transpterygoid and transmaxillary approach for resection of a giant trigeminal schwannoma. The patient was a 49-year-old gentleman who presented with one-year history of vision loss on the left side and progressive deterioration of his vision on the right side. He also had numbness on the left side of the face. Head CT and an MRI showed a large lesion occupying the sphenoid, the clivus, the temporal fossa, as well as the infratemporal fossa with a expansion into the sinonasal cavity and proptosis. We initially consider a preauricular infratemporal fossa access to the tumor, but we decided to perform an expanded endonasal approach in order to reach all compartments of the lesion and optimize complete resection of the tumor. We explained to the patient that in case a total resection not achieved, we could complement with a transcranial approach. We then mapped the tumor in relation to the landmarks of the skull base. The middle cranial fossa component of the tumor is located above the petrous internal carotid artery and the infratemporal component of the tumor located below the petrous carotid artery. We then defined those landmarks and we proceeded uh, to perform the surgery. An endoscopic endonasal approach was started regularly, initially through the left nostril, and a middle turbinectomy was accomplished. We exposed the bulla etymoidalis as well as the uncinate process. We removed the bulla etymoidalis in order to access the uh, maxillary sinus. We removed the uh, uncinate, performing a left side uncinectomy, accessing then the uh, maxillary sinus. With that maneuver, we could see the retromaxillary periosteum and bone that was expanded inside the maxilla. A inferior turbinectomy was accomplished to complete a medial maxillectomy for this patient. That maneuver allowed us to observe and visualize the inferior aspect of the tumor related to the infratemporal fossa later on in the case. The mucosa was elevated and we were able to get control of the sphenopalatine vessels coming out of the sphenopalatine fossa. A visualization of the tumor bulging and the posterior aspect of the maxilla was complete. We decided to perform an anterior maxillectomy, perform an incision of the mucosa medial to the piriform aperture. The mucosa was reflected medially and the bone of the piriform area was exposed, lateralizing the rest of the mucosa, exposing the anterior wall of the maxilla. We drilled the anterior wall of the maxilla still through the nostril on the left side, and we were able to access the anterior aspect of the antrum of the maxillary sinus. We then moved our dissection to perform a uh, nasal septal flap on the right side. The septum was exposed, the flap was reflected posteriorly, and we drilled the um, bone of the uh, septum in order to expose the contralateral mucosa of the sinonasal cavity. A reverse flap was then created and the uh, denuded portion of the flap septum anteriorly was accomplished. With a complete medial maxillectomy, we were able to expose the entire ventral aspect of the bulging perspective of the tumor. We then removed the mucosa and the posterior wall of the maxilla to allow lateral retraction of the pterygopalatine fossa. We then removed the tumor by debulking the tumor located on the sphenoid sinus initially. And then we decided to perform an extracapsular resection of the tumor. So after debulking, we were able to go around the tumor and surround the uh, dissection dissecting the tumor away from the plano sphenoidale, as you can see in the imaging, as the bone was completely eroded. We were able then to dissect and remove the tumor away from the dura of the anterior skull base. As we dissect more posteriorly, we were able to identify that the, on the left side, the tumor was really invasive to the structures. 
We removed the entire component of the tumor located on the sphenoid as well as on the clival area initially, exposing the carotid on both sides. The carotid was eroded and the hesent on the uh, right and left portions of the paraclival region. We observe both carotid arteries, and you can see in correlation to the anatomy in this picture, the location of the landmarks. Doppler was essential for safety in this case. Once the midline component of the tumor was resected, we moved to the lateral component behind the pterygopalatine fossa. We dissected the tumor away from the lateral aspect of the plano sphenoidale and the ventral aspect of the cavernous sinus. We decided not to go through the pterygopalatine fossa directly, but we used a 45 degree endoscope behind the pterygopalatine fossa in order to preserve the contents of the pterygopalatine fossa. We removed the bone more lateral to allow lateralization of the pterygopalatine fossa, as you can see in this portion of the video. With angle scopes behind the pterygopalatine fossa, we were able to go all the way to the dura of the middle temporal fossa, as you can see pulsating in this region after resection of the tumor. That area confirmed in image guidance, then expanded inferiorly as the pressure of the tumor was removed. We then followed the dissection of the tumor from the cavernous sinus all the way laterally in order to accomplish as complete resection as possible. We, in this dissection, are immediately lateral to the carotid artery in the superior orbital fissure. Gently, resection of the tumor in this region has been accomplished. Immediately behind the pterygopalatine fossa, now going inferiorly, we remove the capsule of the tumor that was present in the infratemporal fossa. The infratemporal fossa components herniated superiorly, as you can see also in this image, and we were able with image guidance to confirm that we were past the position of the tumor. Now at the middle cranial fossa, once again, we confirmed the brain herniated back into its regular position. Navigation was essential for us to confirm a uh, complete resection of the tumor. All the components of the tumor were then resected, including the sphenoid, clival component of the tumor, middle cranial fossa, and infratemporal fossa. The anterior maxillectomy was very important for us to pass instruments in parallel and use two corridors into this large lesion. We then covered both carotid arteries with the nasal septal flap that was harvested in the beginning of the case. MRI showed a complete resection of the tumor with no signs of complication and reestablishment of the position of the temporal lobe on the left side. Patient improved his vision completely on the right side with improvement of his numbness on the left side of the face and he persists amaurotic on the left side. Pathology showed a typical schwannoma with a KI67 of 30%.